If you're trading crypto, you need to understand these concepts. I'm talking about market cap, fully diluted valuation, and tokenomics. This video is tokenomics 101, no matter what your skill level in crypto is. Now let's get into it. In the past three years, I've mostly been making videos for crypto natives, people who are active on chain, using DeFi applications, researching with on chain data or on chain analysis, and that sort of thing. However, the past month, as the market's taken off, I've had a lot more conversations IRL. I've gotten away from the computer, talked to people on the street about crypto, and what I've learned is that a lot of people only look at price when buying. They say this coin is $2, this other coin is $100, therefore this $2 coin must have more upside. Uh, but that's not the only number you need to look at. You need to look at the number of tokens, the market cap, the fully diluted valuation, and the relationship between all of those. So in this video, I'm going to show you what all those terms mean and more, uh, as well as how to track those numbers and other important numbers that you should know about tokenomics when investing in crypto. But to better understand things, let's look at a few examples. Here we have CoinGecko, my go-to website for crypto prices. You can see here Bitcoin at 101,000, Ethereum at 3,900, XRP at 241, Solana at around 240, uh, and so on and so forth. And price is straightforward, right? Everyone knows what price is, uh, but that's not the only number you need to worry about when you're looking at, at uh, coins or tokens. You also need to look at the supply, the market cap, and the fully diluted valuation. And CoinGecko is going to be, for most coins, the best source for that. There may be some smaller coins that are not yet on here. And so uh, what's the relationship between all these numbers? What do they mean? Well, the first thing is, and again, if you if this is review to you, uh, apologies, but I've learned that there's a lot of new people who don't know this. Uh, market cap, what is that? It's like the market cap of a stock, even though cryptos are not not stocks. Basically, it's the supply that's out there in circulation times the price. So, for example, you have something like Bitcoin, 101,000. Uh, the market cap is around $2 trillion. And if we click into it, we can see the current circulating supply, and that's because the circulating supply is 19.79 million. So that 2 trillion is 101,000 times 19.79 million. And the reason that's so important is what I see increasingly is people talking about, you know, okay, this other coin is worth 10 cents. If this goes to a dollar, you know, it's it's only 100,000th as much as Bitcoin, so that should be easy. But what they don't take into account is that Bitcoin supply is around 20 million and this other coin supply is a billion, so its market cap would be way higher. And the reason why market cap matters is that it reflects the total amount of money that's, that's held in the asset, and so there is going to be more selling pressure as it gets larger. And also, it is in many ways a reflection of the amount of money that's going to be needed to increase the price. So just to take a simple example, Bitcoin market cap is $2 trillion. Solana market cap is $114 billion, which requires more inflows to double. The answer is, is obviously Bitcoin, right? Uh, we'll talk about liquidity a little bit more later, later in uh, this video, but as a general rule, if something is significantly larger, then it's going to take a lot more money to move the price. So in the case of Bitcoin, you know, a lot more money to move this from two to four trillion than to move Solana from 114 billion to 230 billion. Uh, and to give some perspective, if you look at the largest assets, not just in crypto by market cap, Bitcoin is currently ranked seven between Alphabet, aka Google, and Saudi Aramco. So for example, gold's market cap is 17.79 trillion, Apple is 3.67 trillion, and and so on and so forth. Uh, so for example, you know, if someone predicts something is going to be a hundred trillion dollar market cap, well, you know, then it's suddenly six times more valuable than gold. I think you could make a case why uh, Bitcoin could be there uh, eventually in a, in a few years, uh, but you have to you have to understand that these things don't just exist in in isolation. The next term you need to know is fully diluted valuation, commonly abbreviated as FDV. You can see it here on CoinGecko on the right, to the right of market cap. If you don't see it, it's easy to add. 
just click on customize and then check off FTV and go ahead and add in a market cap over FTV as well. All right, so what exactly does this number mean? If we look at Bitcoin, we see the Bitcoin FTV is around 2.126 trillion compared to a market cap of 2 trillion. And we go back to look at the supply, the circulating supply of Bitcoin, like we noted a minute ago, is 19.79 million. However, you've probably heard only 21 million Bitcoin, right? And we see the total supply is 21 million. So what's the difference? Uh, total supply are tokens or coins that will be in circulation someday, but are not yet in circulation. So in the case of Bitcoin, it's all the Bitcoin that haven't been mined yet. And so that FTV is the market cap taking into account the coins that are not yet in circulation. So the total supply. So in the case of Bitcoin, it's 101,000 times 21 million. And that's how you get to this 2.126 trillion. All right. And so which one should you be looking at? Well, the way to think about it is, is, is in terms of time frames, right? If you're looking at it just for today, you know, you're going to buy this morning, sell in the afternoon, you're day trading market cap is going to be the main number you want to look at. However, if you're looking to buy for a year, two years, then the FTV is suddenly going to become very important because many of those tokens are going to start to come into circulation at some point. And for example, if you look over here on the market cap over FTV, we can see that Bitcoin vast majority are already in circulation. 0.94, that's the market cap to FTV ratio. So 94% are in circulation. XRP, it's 0.57. So you have around 40 some percent that will come into circulation eventually. Now, the thing that you have to look at also is the time frame in which they'll come to circulation. And we'll talk about that later in the video. But just understand that if you see this number lower market cap over FTV, it means that the supply is going to increase eventually. And that increased supply is going to mean more sell pressure. Avalanche is 0 0.91. Ton is 0 0.5. To find some that have a ton of dilution happening in the future, we can sort in reverse by market cap over FTV. And see, for example, that WorldCoin has only 7% in circulation. The market cap over FTV is 0 0.07. So what that means is that if you buy now, the FTV is 39 billion dollars, almost $40 billion, even though market cap is only 2.88 billion. You could have a scenario where the supply doubles in the future, the market cap doubles, but the price actually stays the same. Or the market cap could stay the same, the supply could double and the price would get cut in half. So even though the market cap is the same, the price would be lower. And so one major red flag, I would say to look out for, especially for long-term holds, is when things have very low market cap to FTV ratios. It doesn't mean that they can't do well in the meantime. For example, we see here, WorldCoin has done very well the past 30 days. Hondo has done extremely well the past 30 days. However, if you're looking to hold these things for the long-term, you need to understand that there's going to be unlocks, there's going to be inflation coming, and that's going to affect the price potential. And I'll show you an example of one that uh, already suffered from this. So let's look at Lido. Lido is the largest liquid staking platform, one of the largest platforms in DeFi. If we look at the market cap over time, from the beginning of 2021 to now, the market cap grew from around $5 million to almost $2 billion, and it's actually been over $3 billion in the past. So that is uh, incredible gains. If you look at actually at its low, it did a full 1,000x at one point, right? It was below 3, 3 million, then went up to 3 billion. What about the price though? Uh, the price has actually is down from many times in 2021, despite the fact that the market cap went up 1,000x. And the reason why is that when it first launched, there was only a small amount of tokens in circulation. Now, most of the tokens are in circulation. So the price has been basically flat to down for three years, despite the fact that the market cap has has gone up a thousand X. And before you panic, if you hold a lot of tokens and you're suddenly seeing that they have a very low market cap to FTV, understand that there's actually tools that already exist to track upcoming unlocks and to see the future unlock schedule. So you can know when and to what degree your holdings are going to be inflated away. All right. So the first place you can do to find this is my newsletter. Every single week, dynamodefi.substack.com. We send out a newsletter and it includes a lot of other things like readings, but down at the bottom, 
you will see the biggest token unlocks for that week. So this isn't going to be everything, but this will give you a heads up on upcoming token unlocks for that week. Another place you can go to is tokenimist.ai. They go ahead and they look at things like white papers, look, like, look at protocol documents, and they actually track the unlocks for hundreds and hundreds of protocols. Here, for example, we can see the upcoming unlocks and to highlight a few, if we click on JITO, JTO, we can see that they have an upcoming event in just over a day after I'm recording this video of over 100% of the circulating supply. So basically what that means is that the circulating supply is going to more than double in a single day. And the thing to keep in mind is that this doesn't necessarily mean the price is going to go down tomorrow. Oftentimes the price can be suppressed or the price can go down in anticipation of these. And then when the unlock actually happens, maybe not as many people are selling as people expect, or it's already priced in and then it can actually go up. There's a term some people use for, uh, for this called a bullish unlock. And that's basically when the unlock removes a layer of uncertainty that was surrounding the token. And now it's free to go up more. The other thing is you don't necessarily know what proportion of those, of those holders that are unlocked are going to continue to hold the token versus sell. And that can, that can be related to the price that they got in at. For example, if the, the token is currently trading at less than, or only slightly more than the, um, the fundraising round in which it was bought, then perhaps the people aren't actually at that much, or maybe they have reasons to think because it's a bull market, it's going to go much higher. So just understand this is necessary to know, but it's not enough to sell solely on its own in most cases. Uh, but tokenimists, you're going to be able to find this for most major tokens. And, and if you upgrade, you'll be able to see detailed stats about, about the future unlocks. But even if you're not, you can see upcoming unlocks uh, in the near future anyways. Another website where you can find unlocks totally for free is DeFi Llama. Here you can see a catalog of upcoming unlocks. For example, we have Celestia, Immutable X, Cheeto, Stepin, et cetera, coming in the near future to show you what this looks like. Uh, they actually have the full schedule published here for free, as well as how those tokens are allocated and the unlocked percent. Uh, and then some more information down at the bottom about where this comes from uh, and other upcoming unlocks and who is actually unlocking. And then there's one final concept that you need to understand with tokenomics, and that is liquidity. And this is going to be most relevant for small tokens or recently launched tokens like meme coins. But what liquidity is, is you can think about it as a measurement of how much ability there is to actually sell a token. And I'm going to go to Dex Screener now, which is a good place to see this for on-chain liquidity. And you can see it over here on the right. And I'll zoom in a bit. And basically what liquidity is, is you can see this top token. I know nothing about it, right? Don't go out and, <laughs> and buy this. But liquidity is $60,000. So the market cap is 367000 liquidity is 60,000. This means that suppose you owned most of the supply of this, say, suppose you had $300,000 worth, you could only sell 60,000, really less than $60,000 worth of it, because there's not the liquidity, right? This in the case of tokens on chain is the amount of assets in the liquidity pool for a decentralized exchange. And let's look at some other examples here. So for example, if we go to the largest tokens that exist, now let's just go to all the top tokens on DEXs. Then we're going to have some with massive market caps like USDC. Uh, and in, in a case like this, this token is going to have many liquidity pools. So you can see tens of millions or millions of dollars of liquidity in each of these pools. Basically, that means that there's tons of ability to swap USDC, ETH in this case, uh, to swap tokens like that on chain. You could swap tens of millions of dollars. On the flip side, we can also look at some newer tokens that have very low liquidity. So by default on deck screener, it's going to filter to tokens that have over $25,000 of liquidity. I'll go ahead and remove that. And so now let's go ahead and we're going to look at the top gainers. All right. So here we're going to have some tokens. This one, $38 billion market cap. Great, right? You own a significant portion of that. You're a billionaire, but guess what? Not really because the liquidity is only $295,000. So in most cases like this, it means that the ownership of the token is extremely concentrated or 
in some cases, I don't know about this particular token, right? It's my first time seeing it, but in some cases it means that it's a scam where they've actually disabled selling. I'm gonna guess that's the case in this one because it's had no transactions for six hours, but in many cases it means that they actually uh, deployed a scam contract where it can't be sold, meaning that it can only go up in price. And that's how you get these uh, inflated, very much inaccurate market caps. You see some of these other ones, 24 billion liquidity, 1.5 million. So you own half of this, great. You you have 10, 10, $12 billion on paper, but you actually, I mean, I mean, you know, I would, wouldn't mind having a uh, million dollars, right? But, but the reality is you don't have $10 billion because it can't actually be sold. And so when you see people talking about on uh, TikTok and, and uh, other social media, how they have you know, a hundred thousand dollars of a token, but it can't be sold. That's because there's not enough liquidity, right? It's because, because the market cap isn't real. Let me know down in the comments your own strategies for looking at tokenomics. And if you want more videos like this, let YouTube know by liking and subscribing. Until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.